Hello class, so we're still in relations and functions. This is going to be 1.2, the Cartesian coordinate plane. So today's objectives, we're going to understand elements of the Cartesian plane, understand the x and y intercepts, and then examine how points are in the Cartesian plane are symmetric and how they're going to reflect on that plane. So to help us understand pre-calculus better, we're going to be combining those elements of algebra and geometry together. And the first thing we're going to examine is that Cartesian plane. Now, the way that we should imagine this is two number lines crossing. And we have to make sure that that right angle right, that's formed here is going to be where both of those number lines are going to be 0. Now, we call this horizontal one the x-axis, so that's going to be the horizontal line, and then the vertical line is going to be the y-axis. Now it's really important because having these two axes here is actually going to allow us to determine position on the graph. So if I wanted to consider this point P to be able to draw it, we kind of have to imagine these horizontal lines being extended out from that number line to be able to create and plot that given point. So in this example here, I could say that point P is going to be the ordered pair 2, negative 4, because from 2, if I draw out that imaginary line, it's right there. If I draw out that imaginary line, I get 2, negative 4. So 2, negative 4. Now it's really important that when we describe our points, the x value comes first, and then it's the y value. Now we're going to go over a few important facts about this Cartesian coordinate plane. The first says that if I have two points A, B, and C, D, they're going to be the same point if A equals C and B equals D. Now suppose that just kind of makes sense. It's just natural that if those values in the corresponding spots are the same, then the point is going to be the same in the plane. The next is going to be if I have a point x, y, it's going to lie on the x-axis if and only if y is 0. Now we call this the x-intercept. needs to be memorized. If I have that same point, it's going to lie on the y-axis if and only if x is 0. This is called the y-intercept. That needs to be memorized. Now the origin is the point 0, 0. And it's the only point that's in common with both of these axes. These need to be memorized. You have to know these. They're super important. We're going to extrapolate on a lot of these concepts throughout this class. And if I use that phrase x-intercept and you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's going to be an uh oh moment. So let's kind of plot some of these points. Let's practice this. If I wanted to plot the point A, so it says my x value for that is 5, my y value is 8. So I go over to 5, I go up to 8, and so I can put the dot there, and then I just write the letter A to kind of signify that's the point that I'm talking about. The next one, negative 5 halves, 3, so I go over negative 5 halves, and it's about 2.5. It might be a little easier kind of considering it or thinking that in terms of decimal. So it's going to be here, and then I go up to 3, and so that's going to be point B. Here I have negative 5.8, negative 3, so negative 5.8 all the way down to negative 3, and so that's going to be point C. D is 4.5, negative 1. E, okay, so this is 5, 0, so it's going over to 5, and it's going to stay there at 0, that's E. This is an x-intercept. My F is 0, 5. So no movement in the x-axis, but it's going to go up 5 to the y. That is a y-intercept. G is negative 7, 0, so negative 7, 0. H is 0, negative 9. And then my O is just going to be 0, 0, and we call that the origin. So we practice plotting these points. We could also now divide my Cartesian plane into quadrants. And so it starts here in this quadrant. We call it quadrant one, and it's going to go kind of counterclockwise. So quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and then quadrant four. Now, one of the reasons why we like to kind of separate this is because then we can kind of categorize 
the different elements. Like if I say, hey, everything in quadrant one, I can make the assumption that all of my x values and all of my y values are going to be positive. If I say the values in quadrant three, immediately I can say that the values of x and y are going to be negative. And so by being able to divide these, I'm able to look at elements in different fashions. So now that I've been able to label those quadrants, what I can actually do is I can say, hey, I can name these points being in those different quadrants. And so I can go ahead and do that. I can say that point A is in quadrant one, point B is in quadrant two, and then I know that D is in quadrant four, and C is going to be in quadrant three. Now, one of the most important concepts in math is symmetry. It just opens up a gateway of patterns for us to be able to make various assumptions. Now, this idea of symmetry exists in the Cartesian plane, and there's actually three types of symmetry that we're going to discuss right now. There's many more, but we're just going to kind of focus on these three. The first is being symmetric about the x-axis. Now I'm going to show you visually in a second what that means, but the idea is I'm assuming my A and C stay the same, but notice my B ends up going negative. Okay, It's going to be a symmetric about the y-axis if my A, now my x value, ends up going negative, but notice my y values remain the same. And then we can say that it's symmetric about the origin if my a or my x value ends up going negative and my y value ends up going negative. So we have to kind of memorize these. These are other things that we need to memorize and examine because we're going to be using that. So remember, symmetric about the x-axis, only my y is going negative. Symmetric about the y-axis, only my x is going negative. Symmetric about the origin, both of those values are going negative, my x value and my y value. So let's kind of visually look at this. If I take these points here and I had plotted them, right, we said it's symmetric about the y-axis, my x's stay the same, but my y's, okay, one goes positive, one's negative. So if this is my starting point, P, it's symmetric about the y-axis, meaning uh, about the x-axis, sorry, if it flips over the x-axis. So this point S is symmetric about the x-axis, and I look at the y. y went from positive to negative. Now if I wanted to say symmetric about the y-axis, my definition here is saying that my positive x is now going negative. So my positive x is now going negative. And so these two values here are going to be symmetric about the y-axis. And then symmetric about the origin, both of them are flipping. And so both my x and y are going negative. And so it's flip, flip. It's kind of like a double flip. Flip around the y and flip around the x. That's being uh, symmetric about the origin. It has both of them. Now I just want to qualify just real quick. When I say my x is going from positive to negative, blah, 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 it, it's, I'm making the assumption that I'm adding a negative to whatever my x value is. So my x value could have been this one, right? It started at a negative x, but if I wanted to do symmetric about the y-axis, I have to, from whatever my x is, I have to add a negative to it. So negative, negative x is a positive x, and so it's going to go there. So I just wanted to qualify that first um, when I'm using that phrasing. It's whatever the x value is, you're just adding a negative to it when it comes to the y-axis. To flip or to be symmetric about the x, whatever my y value is, you're kind of adding a negative to it. So uh, looking at here, if I have the point negative 2, 3, it says find the points which are symmetric to p about the x, y, and origin. Okay, so let's complete this. So if I want symmetric about the x-axis, what it's saying here is my y values are switching. Okay, so symmetric about the x-axis, my y value is a positive 3, and so it's going to go to negative 3. Okay, so I'm just going to say that that's part A. Then it says symmetric about the y-axis, and so that means my x-values are going to be flipping, and so this is going to be symmetric about the 
y-axis, and so that would be part B. And then part C it says symmetric about the origin, and so that means I'm going to flip both of them. And so my negative 2 is going to turn to positive 2, and then the positive 3 for the y is going to turn to negative 3, and so it's going to be that value right there. And so this value right here, that's going to be symmetric about the origin, and so that is going to be part C. And so here is the written representation of that. So I switched my y's. And so for part A, right, this is going to be the value negative 2, negative 3. And then for this value right here, that's going to be 2, 3. And then for this value right here, negative 2, 3, that's going to both switch. So that went to positive, that went to negative, and so I get my values there. Now another way to kind of help us with this process is I could use this concept of reflection. Uh, that's going to be like another way to phrase this. So and just say symmetric about, I could also say that it reflected about the whatever axis. And so if I wanted to reflect about the x-axis, it's the same thing, right? If I'm reflecting about this axis here, okay, this point, I replace my positive y with a negative y. Um, if I want to reflect it about the y-axis, I replace my x with negative x. If I want to reflect it about the origin, I re replace my x and y with negative x and y. So it, it's just another way of phrasing it. Instead of saying symmetric, I could also use the phrase reflection. So let's practice a little bit here. It says plot the point uh, 3, 5, then state the quadrant uh, the point is in, and then C, state what the point would be if reflected over the x-axis, over the y-axis, and the origin. So let's go through that. Uh, part A, plot the point 3, 5. So 3, 5, boom, got it. Then it says state the quadrant that it's in, and so I'm going to say that is going to be quadrant 1. And then now it says state uh, what the point would be if reflected over the x-axis. Okay, so if it's reflected over the x-axis, okay, so we can even look at this visually. If it's reflected over the x-axis here, okay, this is the axis it's getting reflected over, that means my y is going from positive to negative. And so this is going to be the value if it's reflected over that axis there. And so I can say that my point is going to be 3, negative 5. Then if I wanted to reflect it about the y-axis, I have this point here, 3, 5. Now if it's reflecting about the y-axis, okay, that means that my x values are going to be switching. And so my x value is going to go from positive to negative in this case. And so this is going to be the new point here. And so if it's reflecting about the y-axis, it's going to be the value negative 3, positive 5. And then if it's going to be about the origin, then it's going to be both. So this is positive 3, positive 5. And so it's going to be negative 3, negative 5. And so that's going to be the reflection about the origin right here. And so the origin, that's going to be negative 3, negative 5. Now I have the point, negative 2, 4. It says state the quadrant the point's going to be in, and then once again, uh, what would it be if reflected over the x-axis, the y-axis, and the origin? So drawing in the point, I have 2, 4. There's my point. And now I need to state the quadrant that it's going to be in. That's going to be quadrant number 2. And now state what the point would be if reflected over the x, y, and the origin. So if it's reflected about the x-axis, we said y goes to negative y. X or flip it over the y-axis as x goes to negative x. And then this is going to have both. So instead of drawing it, maybe with this one we can do in our head, y is going to go to negative y. So that's my x stays the same, but that's now going to be negative 4. x goes to negative x. 
So now this is going to be, if it's negative 2, now it's going to end up being positive 2. But my y stays the same, so that's going to be 4. And then the origin means that it's going to be both, so I have to switch both. So that's going to be 2 and negative 4. And so that's going to be my answer. Let's do one more. So if I plot this point, 0, negative 4, so that's 0 in the x and negative 4 in the y. So that's going to be the point right there. State what quadrant it is. Well, it's not in a quadrant. I'm just going to put it on the y-axis. It's not in a quadrant at all. Um, in part C, it says state what the point would be if reflected about the x-axis. Well, interesting. So if I'm saying when we're reflecting about the x-axis, what I'm doing is I'm saying my y is going to negative y. So if I do that, if I'm saying that it's reflecting about that x-axis, okay, so there's my x-axis, my y value is going, I add a negative to it, and so it's still going to be 0, and negative negative 4 is positive 4, and so boom, there's my reflection about that y-axis right there. That would be the reflection. But then it says, what is the reflection about the y-axis? Hmm. So reflecting about the y-axis, well if I do that, that's my x going to negative x. But negative times a 0 is the same thing as 0. So it's still going to be the point 0, negative 4. So it's the same point. There, there really is no reflection okay, over the x-axis. It just ends up being the same point. Because it's the same point. And then the origin, so that means that my y goes to negative y and my x goes to negative x. Now if I do that, this stays the same and that ends up being the uh, same as reflecting over the x-axis in this case. Okay, that just happens. And so um, even though I wrote like there's no actual reflection, I mean technically, mathematically, we did find the reflection that's there, but it just ends up being the same point as the original. So to conclude this lesson, what did we learn today? Well, we talked about symmetry and the idea of how it could either reflect over the x or y axis. We also talked about the x and y intercepts and how those relate to the Cartesian plane. And we kind of actually defined what the Cartesian plane was and how those x and y values interact with it. So I want to hear from you guys. I want you guys to go ahead and post in the comments what is the y value of an x-intercept and tell me to reflect over the origin, what do I replace my x and y with? So this does conclude our lesson. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments.